We are at Virginia's, and today we are talking about one of the most basic but important parts of cooking, sauce. Mm. So what makes a great sauce? Technique. Mm. Um, starting, and it depends on the kind of sauce. Like a, a veal stock, it's all about how you clean the veal bones, blanch them, and then rinse them, and then cover them in water again. And the, the perfect amount of mirepoix. And say. not taking shortcuts. Shortcuts are not good for sauce, <laughs> that's true. Every step is magnified, so three days later when, you're, when your veal sauce is ready, all of the mistakes that you made in the beginning are, uh, are magnified tenfold in the sauce itself. For the amateurs among us, if we have a sauce that's too thin or too thick, what are your recommendations for trying to get it back to the place that it should be? Reduction is, is the best way, but it's not always possible, especially um, if you've already added salt. So then you have uh, a couple of options. There's the the roux option, which you could use a, I mean, a butter and flour, mm -hmm. cornstarch and water. Um, but you can also you can also, which is one that I love, is if you bring, get it really really hot, and it's certainly if it's a meat based jus, if you put a knob of cold butter in it, mm -hmm. if it's just a small amount of of sauce that you're trying to to get to the right consistency, if you get it really hot and put a little knob of cold butter in it, and swirl it around. It's an old French technique called Monte Aubert, and it's, uh, it helps with the, uh, with the, with the salt, too, because a little bit of fat will kind of ease the salinity. Where can people begin and find success? Chicken stock. Mm -hmm. Chicken stock, I think, is the easiest and the best, because it's quick. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take more than 20 minutes, and then if you reduce it, it'll, it'll just get more and more intense. So what are the sauces that you think people should just not try until mm. they're a little bit more advanced? Like, what are the sauces that took you the longest time to master? I would say, uh, master, master's a strong <laughs> word now. I mean, I'm, I've got a that long way to go before, you to before I could ever Feel that they're acceptable. <laughs> uh, I think uh, shellfish. Hmm. I, love, I love shellfish. It's a very intense flavor, but um, balancing right. the intensity of it. Can especially go wrong it, so fast. Yeah, and especially because it does have uh, a lot of salt to it. As soon as you cook it, you don't have to add any, so you have to be careful with the reduction of that. So I would say start with chicken and go Work from there. Work your way up. Yeah. And so speaking of working our way up, you're going to show us a very simple but amazing sauce today. What are we making? Roasted gnocchi with Parmesan and uh, lemon sauce. Well, will you take us to the kitchen and show us? Absolutely. So we're back in the kitchen at Virginia's and we're going to be cooking our roasted gnocchi. So you want to start with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil with a hot pan. Start with the handmade gnocchi. And we, we sear them because we, we like the flavor. So you want to get them all roasted nicely on both sides. When they've gotten golden brown on, on one side, after about a minute, two minutes, flip them all over so that you get a nice color on both sides. When they've gotten color on the other side, you add your, um, your vegetables. In this case, we've got fava beans and English peas and uh, morel mushrooms. And you can saute them all together. You want to kind of see. You want to season every every layer of the pasta. Deglaze with a little mushroom-infused vegetable stock. This dish can be very versatile. It's it doesn't have to be just vegetables. You can definitely finish it with chicken stock. We like to put a little lemon confit in our gnocchi. Say uh, it kind of adds a, a sweetness and a, and a lemon essence to it. Also, a lemon juice for acidity. Freshly ground black pepper. This is the part where the technique comes in because we've brought the hot mushroom stock to a boil and we've added a little bit of butter in order to make a, a, the right consistency and we're going to glaze everything down together in one pan. But you don't want to bring it down too much because otherwise it's going to break. So you want to kind of want to have it loose because the Parmesan cheese is going to tighten it up. Before you add the cheese, it, 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 should, it should look a little soupy, like a very light clam chowder, I guess. These are fava leaves that we got at the market. So now you can see this is a little bit tight because I've cooled the pan down with the fava leaves. So I'm going to add a little bit more mushroom stock. You can see it's like a ragu, but it's a little bit loose. So now you put your Parmesan cheese. You don't want to bring it back to a boil or your, or your Parmesan cheese is going to get stringy. You can see the, the way it's tightened after you've added the, the Parmesan. Pull it off the heat. Plate it immediately. You don't want the gnocchi to sit in the sauce too long or they can, they can start to get mushy and turn into like a, a, a porridge. Thank you for watching. This is our gnocchi with lemon Parmesan here at Virginia's. Uh -huh.